Today we're going to talk about deadlift technique and specifically I want to share with you probably the most important uh, performance indicator that I'm looking for when someone's performing their conventional deadlift um, and that is how the bar passes over the knees. Now we know that the bar needs to be against the body and that the further away the bar is from the legs the more weight or I guess the more torque is required at the back so the more load goes through your back and the harder the lift becomes. So we're taught when we're first learning a deadlift to start the bar against your shins and that you should scrape your shins. Uh, this is evidenced when people are thinking about the deadlift or talking about the deadlifts and they share the fact that you know, the bar scrapes their shins on the way through. But this is actually something that I don't advocate and I don't think the bar should be scraping your shins. I use myself as an example, like I'm going through conventional uh, deadlifting blocks and my shins are fine. There's no, no pain in the shins. And if the bar is bashing your shins, it probably suggests you're performing the deadlift incorrectly as a whole, which is the topic of this video. Okay, so what I want you to do is conceptualize what it means for the bar to be on the ground. And I'm gonna put a little graphic over here. And you can see that in the start position, your shins start over the bar, your back starts flat, and your hips are up. And we know that the bar path that we're going for when the bar leaves the ground is we want the bar to go straight up, just like in a squat. We don't want the bar to go forwards, and we don't want the bar to go backwards. We want the bar to go up in a straight line. But there's one part of your body that's blocking the bar from going up in a straight line, and that's your shins. Your shins start against the bar with a slight forward angle and they start over the bar. So if, you're, if the bar wants to go up in a straight line and your shins are in the way, then it makes sense to reason that we want our shins to be moving back, you know, our knees need to move back out of the way as the bar's coming up so that the bar can go up in a straight line. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. What you often see is actually lifters not moving their shins out of the way. Their shins stay almost in the same spot for the first half of the lift. And as a result, the bar kind of scrapes against the shins, uh, moves forward. And then the key point that I'm looking for as a coach when I'm watching someone lift, uh, and I guess this is like the easiest thing to look for, is how the bar goes across the quads, is a lot of times you're gonna see the bar go around the quads. So it's like the bar scratches the shins and then it jumps over the knee and then lands again on, on the mid thigh without ever having touched the quadriceps. So that's the number one thing we're looking for is how does the bar slide against the quads? If you're one of my lifters, or if you've watched me coach in the gym, or you've seen a video of me coaching in a comp, in a comp one of the cues that I'm often repeating that I get mocked for is rub the quads, because you want the bar to rub the quads, and that's the, the key cue that I want you to take out of this video, is the bar should be rubbing your quads. And if the bar's not rubbing your quads, it suggests that you're performing the deadlift incorrectly. So what we wanna do is we want our knees to be moving back as the bar's coming off the ground, and the way I like to conceptualize it is the bar doesn't like press against your shin. It doesn't bash against your shin. If anything, it slides against your shins. Like your shins should be perfectly timed so that they're moving back out of the way as the bar comes up in a straight line. The bar stays over midfoot the entire time. Your knees are moving back so that once the bar gets to your kneecap, your knees are like almost fully extended. They're mostly extended, mostly straight. Your torso is still over the bar. And from there we can Extend our hip, lock out, you know, push your hips forward. And from there, that's where the bar slides up against your quads. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do some demonstrations um, so I can talk you through what it looks like as I'm doing it. And we can try to look for the points I'm talking about. Okay, so I hope that explanation made a little bit of sense. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to demonstrate um, some of the things I was talking about in real time as I'm talking about what I'm doing. And I want you to, I wanna see if you can try to pick up on the errors that I'm making and try to spot the main cue that I was speaking about before, which is how does the bar pass the knee and how does the bar pass the quads? So one thing I didn't really elaborate on before that I wanna quickly touch on is this is the most important part of your leg that the bar has to touch. Again, I'm not fussed if the bar's even touching your shins. Sometimes people will say that, like, you know, I'm trying to keep the bar close and they're doing the right thing in their head, you know, the bar's against their shins, but then it jumps over this part of the leg. Incorrect, this, this part, this portion of your leg here, between your kneecap and the mid thigh or quarter thigh, is the most important. The bar has to rub that part of your leg. And I'll even put my hand on people's legs, scratch them and say, this is the part of your leg you need to feel. Um, so that's what I want you to be watching. Try to see how the bar touches the legs. I'm going to do a couple of bad reps to demonstrate first. So this is what I often see. Um, the bar rubs against the shins. You can see here the bar's on the knee but the knees are still bent. So there was no extension of the knee and now the bar jumps over the quads. So I'll try to do that again just in one smooth action. So what's happening in those 
uh, examples is my knees aren't extending. As the bar's coming up, my knees say are beginning at 135 degrees of knee flexion, and they're staying at that same angle until the bar gets to here, my knees are still bent as if I'm doing a normal deadlift. And then it's like a sudden lockout. And when you get that sudden lockout, your knees move back, the bar has space between your quads, and then the bar comes into your thighs. Instead, what we're gonna to try to do is we wanna extend our knees as we're lifting. We keep our, our torsos over the bar. And importantly, our knees and shins are moving back as the bar breaks the ground. So maybe come around a little bit and you can see a little bit closer. And you can see in those examples that as the bar's breaking the ground, my shins are moving backwards and my shins are making way. That's the important part. My shins are making way for the bar to come up in a straight line. And as a result, the bar touches the kneecap and scratches the quad. A couple of really uh, important things to note, or I guess like uh, yeah, interesting things to take note of, are that when people compete, or even in training, you'll often see lifters using baby powder or talcum powder. And that's designed so that the bar slides against your legs more smoothly and it doesn't get stuck in your quads. Especially in a competition, you're wearing a soft suit, you don't want the bar to get stuck in your legs. What you'll often see though, or what I see a lot of, is people use baby powder on their legs, they do their deadlifts, and at the end of the set, they have the exact same amount of baby powder on their legs as they started with. And that is another really good way of assessing whether or not the technique is correct. Because if the baby powder's not coming off your legs, that means the bar hasn't slid against your legs and you've done it wrong. So that's one thing that I often see. So again, like adding to the cue that I shared with you before, what I'll say to those lifters is, you've got baby powder on your quads, use it. It's there so the bar slides against your legs. So rub your quads, rub your thighs, have the bar slide against that baby powder. And another thing that you can, uh, another way that you can assess whether or not someone's doing this correctly is what the shape of the lifter's legs are like after their deadlift training or during a deadlift uh, block, you know, a block of training where they're doing lots of deadlifts. So for me, for example, when I'm doing my sumo deadlifts, when you look at my leg, the part where my hands come across my leg here, all the hair gets ten, torn off, especially if I'm doing, say, sumo twice a week, and I do that for 10 weeks straight. By the end of it, I've got no hair left on my quads on this part of my leg. And I know that's the case for a lot of other lifters, especially uh, in, including conventional lifters. It's almost like they're tearing the hair off their legs. That's a good sign. Similarly, if someone's getting bruising on their shins and scratching on their shins, that tells me that the shins aren't getting out of the way on the way up. So in real time, the best thing you can do is try to watch where the bar is relative to the legs as the bar comes up. Does the bar jump over the knee or does the bar jump over the quad? That's something that you can um, see in real time. But there are other indicators like the baby powder thing, the hair on your legs thing. So a number of different ways you can assess this um, that are really easy, really easy things to look at that tell you straight away if they're doing it wrong or doing it right. So how do you correct this? A uh, number of different cues that you can use. Knees back is the easiest one, shins back, uh, just general education. The lifter needs to know what they should be doing. A lot of times it's not that they're mis-executing, it's just they don't even know what they should be doing. They don't realize that the shins need to be moving back and they don't realize that the bar has to be against the quads. The only mistake that lifters will make when you do tell them this, when you tell them to rub the bar on their quads, is instead of them keeping the bar against their legs, it's like they cheat and bring their quads to the bar. So this is probably the only other mistake you'll see is it kind of looks like this. And they kind of do this like ramping style lift where they get their quads under the bar. Again, that's just like mis-executing the idea or misunderstanding the idea. So main cues, shins move back, knees move back, torso has to stay over the bar. You're not trying to lift your torso, you're trying to keep your torso over the bar while your knees move back. Uh, ways to conceptualize it, I teach people about leg press. It's like a leg press. In the gym, you do a leg press, your knees just extend. That's what you should be doing into the ground. Some people use cues like push the world away or push your feet through the floor. All those things work really well as well. So I hope you found today's video useful. Again, big take home message is bar should be against the quads. It shouldn't be going around your knees. Different ways to conceptualize it, different cues that you can use. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below, I'll get back to you. Uh, thanks for watching. Testing. What's crack? Really, uh, I'm gonna start again. Okay. I would... The cue that I'm gonna share, oh fuck, I always... Specifically, I wanna share with you. <laughs> and another thing that you'll uh, uh, often see is...
fucking forgotten what I was going to say. And I'm going to hope that I can stitch this together and make it actually work. Fuck. The bar. Can I cut all this out and do it again?